Okay, guys, we're on our last topic that talks about the individual components of the cytoskeleton. Don't forget, this topic or this chapter has four topics, and the last one's going to be in muscle contractions. And we're going to look at that from the cellular level, not from like what you've seen in A and P before. So it's important that you make sure you get to chapter or to topic four as well. But here in topic three, we're going to talk all about actin filaments. So just like the other ones, we're going to follow a similar format. We're going to start with what are the fil what are actin filaments, what functions do actin filaments perform. We're going to talk about what controls actin filaments. As always, here's your objectives. Please let me know if you have any questions on these so we can go through them. Some of these last ones, especially that relationship of actin and myosin, are important. Um, and you'll see that a lot more in topic four, how that actually works. But be aware that this uh, topic objective fits in both topics. All right, so we had intermediate filaments, which were rope-like structures. We have microtubules, which are tube-like structures. Now we have our twisted chain. So it's the active molecules. They form, like, as you can see here, this twisted chain type shape. They have the, they're composed of actin molecule monomers that make this up. And they are, have the plus and minus end just like we just talked about. So the, and it's important because that means that that polarity allows for it to um, grow and shrink as needed. These are thinner, more flexible than microtubules. So they can do a variety of other functions in that. And we're gonna talk a little bit about this polarity again here in a second. So here's how actin is polymerized. And it's very similar to how we did microtubules where the monomers are bound with ATP in this case. And we talked about GTP being used for um, the microtubules. And what happens is that actin molecule with the ATP is gonna bind and this creates that actin filament. And as the ATP is hydrolyzed, the bond between the actin molecules become weaker and then it disassembles and that ADP is released. Then when ATP rejoins, it joins the actin again. And this allows for that polymerization. And so it assembles and disassembles very similarly to the microtubule. And here is some of the examples of what actin can do in the cell. And while there's a lot of them here, we're not gonna go through each of them. I don't expect you to have these all memorized and their examples and everything. But the key I want you to realize is that actin doesn't work alone. Actin works with something known as the actin-related proteins. And as you can see, there's a variety of them here. We got severing proteins, we got nucleating proteins, we have bundling proteins. There's a whole bunch. And these are all known as actin-related proteins. And they all help the actin perform its functions. So just be aware that actin doesn't perform its function on its own. Everything it does, it has these ARPs that play a role. The main function that I want you to focus on for actin is creating the structure known as the cell cortex. And this cell cortex lays just below that plasma membrane and creates a meshwork that supports the plasma membrane. Because remember, we've talked about the plasma membrane, how fluid it is, how it's moving all the time. And it, hopefully at some point you've wondered, how is it possible that this fluid membrane is what is acting as the barrier to the cell. Well, it's because it's not just that. It has this cell cortex underneath that helps make sure that it maintains cell shape. And then if it's a cell that can move, uh, it supports a cell movement. And we're gonna talk about cell movement here in the next slide. So here's an example of cell crawling. And there are three main steps to cell crawling. And these are all supported by actin like I just talked about. The first of this is the polymerization, the polymerization of the lamellar podia. And you can see that here on this picture. It starts to stick out a little bit and that forms that protrusion. Then it's going to attach to the uh, surface that it's on and this creates those focal contacts. And what's going to happen then is in the next step we have, so the first step is the protrusion, the second step is the attachment. And then we have the contraction from the back end which works with myosin and helps contract the cell to catch up to the part that is um, that has been protruding, and then it starts all over again. Now remember, this is through this is the main one of the main functions of actin. But actin, as you know from two slides ago, does not do this on its own. It has those actin, um, those ARP molecules, so, so that help this occur. So remember, it's not just actin on its own. But you can see that cortex here in this orange and how that helps these cells move. This is really important in um, in the immune cells for us, but in any kind of single cell eukaryotic cell, this is how they move. Actin also works with myosin to do muscle contractions in our cells, in our muscle cells especially. And we're gonna talk about this in the next topic, 
So I don't want you to worry about it too much right now, but here you can see how there's this interaction between myosin and actin to form these contractions. So what controls the actin filaments? How do, how do we decide what their shapes are and everything else? And this is all through intracellular signaling, or intercellular signaling rather. And we talked all about this in communication in chapter 16, but you can see here how there's different activation se sequences that can change the way the actin is working. And this determines the cell shape and the act action of the actin within the cell. So it's really important to realize that signals, any signal can change any of these. We're not entirely sure how these signals always work or what they do, but you can see some examples here on this slide. So this is the end of our short little topic here on actin filaments. When you're ready, move on to topic four where we're gonna talk about muscle contraction and kind of bring all this together a little bit.